Hi everyone, David Malley here and today we're going to do something really cool. I'm going to show you how to quickly forecast data like this in Power BI. So let's get started. This is, you need to start off with first with time series based data. And so we have that here for a local chain or store chain. And um, we have daily data, year, quarter, month, day. We also have selling price, quantity sold, and store number and transaction number. So that's the data we have here. So now what I want to show you here is we've got two cards here. I'm going to use this one primarily to in a minute here to show you how to forecast. So this is just a card. It's right here. You click here and you would put count of day. Okay. Just like that. So next up here, this is a line graph. We're going to put a line graph in. You cannot do it with a bar graph. You cannot do the forecasting you know in a default manner with any of the other graphs you have to have the line graph line chart actually right here so you'll see there's three fields here once you do that correct you have this one is fields this one format and this one's analytics so once you have this what you're going to see before you have any forecasting going on let's get rid of the forecast just delete it out there this is what you would primarily see once you put that in there so if I go back here I have day and I have quantity sold amount Right, so day gives me this, and quantity sold amount gives me the number per day, and it's a nice graph looking like this. But I want to have a forecast, so I go to the third tab here, analytics, and then I go to forecast, and I'm gonna hit add. I can call it anything I want, so we'll just leave it as forecast when it doesn't matter. By default, it goes to auto and gives you a straight line. That's not what you want, that's not gonna be pretty. So I have to see here, how many points do I have and how many points do I want to forecast, right? So if I look at this, I have 138 days of data, basically four months, a little bit over four months. And so what I want to do is probably forecast maybe a fourth of that. So maybe we're going to forecast, I don't know, uh, 25 days. Let's try that. And I want to have, you have to look at the confidence interval. And before we get into that, let's just talk quickly about what the forecast uh, method is based off of in Power BI. It's called exponential smoothing and basically what it's going to do is it's going to use decreasing weights over time, uh, expect exponentially decreasing weights over time and it causes more smoothness of the data. So it won't have as much variance or all the peaks necessarily that you might have in your regular data. So once we understand that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our confidence interval. And the confidence interval, in this case, I'm using 95%. That means that 95% of the values will fall within or should fall within this um, bands of up and uh, upper and lower. So let's go here. I've got 95% selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this auto part right here. So for seasonality, I want to look at the number of points I have in a year. I don't have a full year. I have 138 days. I have, you know, basically four months. So I would probably pick 138 days to match that. If I do that, what you're gonna see is, boom, you have your forecast, but you lost your confidence interval. And the reason being behind this is that uh, Power BI does not like high uh, numbers of points for that, for seasonality. So once you, there's a cutoff somewhere around 50 or so. So if I were to go and take this down to 50, there it comes back. Okay, I'm not exactly sure where it is. It might be 55, something like maybe 56, but something like that. So let's stick with that for right now so we have our confidence intervals and you can see that. So now that we have that, we have our forecast. See how quick that it was to get the forecast for it based on our data? But we have no idea of how accurate it is at this point. It could be anything. So it could be horribly off. So what we would want to do is look at it at the past data compared, bring our forecast backwards over that. And that's where this ignore last comes in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add here. And then what I'm going to do is look at my forecast length. So I could make this, I don't know, let's make it 15. So we're going to take it backwards. See what I'm doing? I'm taking this to go this way. So let's hit apply and see what happens. So now you can see I've got my actual values overriding my forecast values. And you can see they're actually pretty much within, I mean, there's a blue spot here that it hits the tip of this confidence interval, but it's still there. So it should, you know, within, uh, it might actually be a little bit below, let's just see. So if we look at it's 111 and the lower bounds 112. So it misses it by one. 
that that's not a big deal it's within the bounds I could have lengthened these a little bit so we could make this 30 and make this 15 that might show it a little bit better and you can still see it does come out here a little bit but it stays pretty much within there if, obviously if I go with my forecast going longer it's going to be less accurate so I could go and make that 20 so you got two points now outside there because we're not using as much data here and the forecast is not based off as much data so you want to keep it within reason here so we'll just make it 10 make that maybe 30 let's try that we could do that you have you can see it right here it is still that's back to where we had that one point that was just like one uh but actually it's equal to it in this case right or it's let me see here no it's one point below it's exactly where it is but it shows it's within reason it's pretty accurate it's good to use it's easy um, so that's how we do the forecast here. I could go down here and change the colors real quick if I wanted to. I could change the color to, I don't know, um, let's see, I could pick an orange, I could pick a magenta. Let's say I pick a magenta on it. There we go. I could do that. Um, there's a couple other things you could add in here if you wanted to. You can change the confidence stop band style to, you know, a line instead of a fill. You could change the line style to dash if you wanted to um, and you can add in some other things here but that's not necessarily to do with the forecast so that's how you do forecasting in power bi quick and easy based off time series data in this case we used for 138 days and what i did was i showed you how i went to 50 to keep the confidence interval in obviously if i take this back out again as you saw earlier and put 138 in there we lose the confidence interval and it doesn't make it as nice and easy to look at i'm not sure where the cutoff is exactly off the top of my head where we lose it still there at 55 is it still there at 60 let's say it's still there at 60 so you can it's somewhere around you have to play with it and figure out exactly where the confidence interval is where it cuts off or not the confidence interval the uh, seasonality points where it cuts off and says i'm not going to give you a confidence interval anymore but you can clearly see the data does look like it belongs and uh it's within reason and it's within the range i could make this bigger and make it a 99 percent if i wanted to and it's still within the reason so this is a quick way, an easy way to forecast your data in Power BI. You can do it with any time series based data, quick and easy. I hope you found this helpful and interesting and informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share to my channel because we have a lot of great stuff like this already on the channel. Go look at the other videos and we've got a lot of great stuff coming out. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share and have a great day.